Now let's look at another, at another example. Let's say we have a system, the transfer function g of s presented by 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 2. So now, um, we need to design a, a feedback controller. so that the steady state error is 1% only. So, let me start with a simple controller. Here's my transfer function assistant. One over s squared plus two s plus two, and I'm going to use simple gain controller KT, and here's my reference minus plus the output and the feedback. This is called a proportional controller since the output signal of the controller is proportional to the error. So this is the controller. And this is the system. It's uh, usually referred to as the client of the control system. So this is a proportional controller and I need to find the value of kt so that the steady state error is um, 1. So the steady state error is 1 over 1 plus g of 0. In this case, g is the transfer function in the feed forward branch, in this branch here, and that's kp divided by s squared plus 2s plus Two. So that means that the steady state error is 1 over 1 plus substitute 0 in here, you'll have kp over 2. And that needs to be, to be uh, only uh, 1%. So that means that kp has to be um, two and KP is one nine eight. The value of one ninety eight KP is going to result in a one percent steady state error. Now so my system becomes the KP is 198. Let's see what effect does this controller has on the system. Now 
let's find the equivalent of this system. Let me do the block diagram reduction G over 1 plus G H to reduce this to a single transfer function so that I can determine the other what happened to the other properties of the system. Um, so the new transfer function TS representing the whole system is g over 1 plus g h that's going to be g is 198 s squared plus uh, multiply that in you have s squared plus 2s plus 200 the result of the reduction of this system. Now, let's compare the new system, the new resulting system with the original system without the feedback. Uh, first, the characteristic equation of the original system Q of S was s squared plus 2s plus 2. Okay. Now, from this characteristic equation, I can determine the, um, the settling time, the damping, uh, the response frequency, and all these parameters. You can do that either by saying comparing this to the standard form s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared okay or the other way to do it is to find the roots of the characteristic equation or the poles of the transfer function if you set this to zero and solve for s you will get Two complex roots negative 1 plus minus j1 and that means that first the damped frequency is 1 The natural frequency omega n is going to be the, the magnitude of this complex number which is 1 squared plus 1 squared square root of 2. The damping ratio is the cosine of alpha zeta is 1 divided by the omega n square root of 2 and that would be 0 0.707 the time constant is 1 divided by the real component 1 divided by 1 that's 1 which means that the settling time is 4 seconds. Or you can use this formula and find omega n and then substitute and find zeta and then the time constant is 1 over zeta omega n and so on. You can find the values either by determining what the roots are or following the same formula. Now for the controlled system The characteristic equation changed became s squared plus 2s plus 200. So what basically what the major change is that omega n squared became 200. 
omega n squared became 200 or omega um, <coughs> squared plus 1.4 so omega n is 14.14 radians per second and that means if you substitute this omega in here to zeta omega n is 2 omega n is 14 that means zeta came 0 0.0747 so what happened is I managed to drop a steady state error to 1% but I, along the way I lost my damping I had an under damped system with a significant amount of damping 0.7 damping ratio, I ended up with a system with 0.07 damping ratio. Very underdamped system, nearly undamped system. So I lost a lot of uh, advantages here in this system. The system response will, will become a sinusoidal response for a long time before it settles to its final value. So what can I do? In such a case. I will modify my controller slightly. Instead of using a proportional controller, constant times the error, that's a proportional controller, proportional to the error, P, okay, P. I'll keep that and add another component. I'll take the error, differentiate the error, and the derivative in the frequency domain is represented by S, multiply the derivative by the new gain, we'll call it KD, and have the sum of these two components produce the control signal. So I'm going to take this combination here and replace the KT by this new combination as a new controller and see what happens if I use this instead of simply KT. Now here's the system with the new controller the controller that contains two components proportional, one component proportional to the error error signal times a constant and the other component is proportional to the derivative of the error S times the error means the derivative of the error and now let's see how that goes now I'll perform some reductions here we have two blocks in series and then the resulting block will be in parallel with the uh, KP block so basically I will have um, KD times S and KP And I'm not going to draw the rest of the block diagram, it's going to be the same. Now, these two blocks are in parallel, so the result will be one block of the sum of the two blocks, Kp plus Kd times S. And that's my controller block. That's, that block replaces all this. Uh, system and here's the final system KP plus KDS controller going into the original system the plant 1 over S squared plus 2 S plus 2 and then the feedback
R and the L of sigma plus minus. Now, the, the function G of S in the feed forward branch, G is simply the multiplication of the two blocks here, KP plus KDS divided by S squared plus 2S plus 2. Now the steady state error is 1 over 1 plus G of 0, which is going to be 1 over 1 plus set S to 0 in here, so 0, 0, and 0, and I will end up with the same KP over 2, and if that error is to be only 1%, that means KP has to be 198. Now, the reason I added this component was because I lost damping in the system when I used just KP. The damping dropped from 0.7 to 0.07. So, let's see what I can do now. Now, let me find how the system would look like after adding this KP and KD. Let me reduce the system to a one transfer function and study the characteristics of this transfer function. Now the reduction is done through the same formula G over one plus G H. So, G is right here, KP plus KDS, and when you substitute that would be S squared plus 2S plus 2 plus KP plus KDS after simplification. The characteristic equation now is S squared plus 2 and there's a KD multiplied by S plus 2 plus KP. Now KP is right here 198 S squared plus 2 plus K D S plus 200. So now I have the freedom to choose another parameter K D so that I can restore the original damping in the system. I can go back to 0.7 damping. Now from this characteristic equation and using the KP I have here the natural frequency omega m squared is 200 and 2 zeta omega m right here is 2 plus k kd now for zeta 0 0.707, that's my design or desired value. I want to go back to this damping ratio. I'll have 2 times 0 0.707 times the square root of 200. equals 2 plus k d and now I can solve for k d square root of 214 7 10 20 k d going to be 18 so 
So if I set KD to 18 and KP to 198, I will have the required steady state error, 1%, and I will keep my damping ratio at 0.707, or even I can even change it. If I'm not satisfied with 0.7, if I want my system to be critically damped, I can also do that. I can set this to 1 and find a new KD. So KD basically, in this system particularly, controls how much damping I add to the system. How much I change KD, that affects the damping of the overall system, the transfer function that represents the complete system. The complete system, to determine the characteristics of this system, you have to reduce it to one transfer function, and that transfer function was this. After performing this uh, block diagram reduction step, so this transfer function represents the whole system. This whole system is equivalent to this transfer function. So the performance of this complete system depends on the poles of this transfer function or the roots of this characteristic equation. So using steady state error, I determined KP and now I can play with KD in any way I want so that I can change the amount of damping in the system according to my design requirements.